Welcome to Electron Online. And the next topic we're going to talk about in thermodynamics is the change of phase of materials and the associated latent heat as we call it. So we go back to something we're familiar with. Let's say we have a little container, and of course it has to be a tiny little container, because we're talking about it containing one gram of water, and one gram of water is very, very tiny. But let's say we add one calorie of heat to that container, and let's say the container doesn't change temperature, it's isolated from the water to some insulator, and we add one calorie to the water, we expect the temperature increase to be one centigrade degree. Now, what would happen if you took one gram of ice at zero degree centigrade? So the ice, uh, if you now add any heat to the ice, the ice will begin to melt. And the question then would be, how much heat do we add to that one gram of ice to completely melt that one gram of ice? And secondly, let's say we have a small little container that has boiling water in it at 100 degrees centigrade. And uh, how much heat do we have to add to the water to completely evaporate that water? So when we go from the solid state to a liquid state, or from a liquid state to a uh, gas state, we go through what we call a change of phase. And in order to do that, it requires energy. Well, first of all, to go from a solid state to a liquid state, you have to go from a state where the atoms are locked in position due to the electrical bonds. And then when you add enough heat, the, the molecules begin to vibrate so violently that they actually break loose from each other and they begin to roll over each other like marbles would roll over each other. And so then you turn a solid into a liquid. Then if you continue to add more and more heat, the vibrations continue to the point where they get so much energy that they will actually jump free from the water and turn into a gas. Or in the case of water, it turns into a vapor. And again, that requires a certain amount of energy. And you'd be surprised how much energy that takes. Because it only takes one calorie to take one gram of water and increase of a one centigrade degree, but to take one gram of ice at zero degree centigrade, and you want to completely melt it, the heat required, Q, is equal to 80 calories. Technically speaking, it's actually 79.7 calories, but we typically just call it 80 calories. Compared to how much it takes to raise the temperature by one degree centigrade, it takes 80 times as much to completely melt one gram of ice at zero degree centigrade to liquid at zero degree centigrade, an enormous amount of heat. Not only that, when you take boiling water and you want to completely evaporate it, it takes even more heat. The Q required to completely evaporate one gram of boiling water is equal to 540 calories, with other words, 540 times as much as the energy required to take one gram of water and raise its temperature by one centigrade degree. So there you get kind of a feel of how much heat it requires. Now, it turns out since the temperature doesn't change through the phase, in other words, when one gram of ice, which started zero degree centigrade, completely melts, that water, that's now melted water, will still be at zero degree centigrade, so it still will be at the same temperature. There's no temperature change. So the equation we use for that is Q is equal to M times L. M is the mass of the substance that we're changing through a phase, and L is what we call the latent heat of of the uh, of the material so in the case of uh, water so the amount of heat required is equal to the mass one gram times the latent heat of fusion as we call it so let's call this uh, latent heat of fusion now you say well wait a minute fusing means you take a liquid put it into a solid that's correct but it's the same energy required to go both ways so if you take one gram of water and completely freeze it to a block of ice of one gram at zero degree centigrade, then of course you would have to take away from that 80 calories of heat. And likewise, you have one gram of steam at 100 degrees centigrade and you allow it to, to liquefy, uh, to condense as we call it, then of course you have to remove 540 calories of heat in order for it to go from a gas phase to a liquid phase. So this is called latent heat of fusion. So to indicate going from a liquid to a solid, and this is called latent heat of vaporization, which means going from a liquid state to a gas phase. So the terminology is from a liquid to a frozen or liquid to a gas phase. So it's called latent heat of vaporization. Of course, water is kind of a common substance, and we commonly go from liquid to solid, solid back to liquid, and you know, from liquid to ice, and ice back to liquid. Same with the vaporization. Of course, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization is something you will see in all substances. Of course, we can talk about that later. But anyway, so this would be equal to uh, 80 calories 
per gram. So notice that the units are energy per gram or energy per mass. The grams cancel out and of course you're left with calories and here for here for this uh, change in phase you say Q is equal to M times L. In this case the L is the latent heat of vaporization and so that would be equal to one gram times 540 calories per gram. Again notice that the grams cancel out you're left with calories and so this would of course be 540 calories required to change one gram of boiling water to, to a gas phase and here Q would be equal to 80 calories that's the heat required to take one gram of ice at zero degrees centigrade and turn it completely into a liquid. So hopefully this will give you a good understanding of what, what the, the phase of change, the change of phases and what the associated heat required is which is called the latent heat either of fusion or of vaporization.